about why do we need cryogenic electronics? So there are three main reasons. Actually, there's one more that I did not put here. One is that now you heard about quantum computing. Quantum computing only works, or uh, most of the quantum computer ar computing architecture, they work at very low, low temperature, right? Some of them can go to here, 20 to 100 milli Kelvin. One milli Kelvin is one over 1,000 Kelvin, right? And our room temperature is 300 Kelvin. Now, if you have a quantum computer working at this region, regime, right, then how, uh, and those talk the, talk the, the class already, or you, if you have not, Quantum computer is nothing but just a passive wave function, an atom, a superconducting qubit, a spin electron, and you sit there, it's useless. And what makes it useful is that you control it. How do you control it? You actually need a lot of electronics to shoot a microwave pulse or laser pulse to it to let it evolve, to do the quantum computing. So you need a lot of electronics, so you see, beside this part, all these are just a EE stuff, right? Since this is EE class, I just keep be e, e center. Don't 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 think that I'm uh, not ch not ch uh, trying to do something. But analog to digital converter, right? A mixer, digital to analog di uh, converter, ever launch photo dial to detect the photon. You want to put this electronics at very low temperature. Why is that? Do you know? Why I cannot just put at room temperature? Reduce the noise, thermal noise. Right? The reason we want to put the quantum computer at 20 mini Kelvin is to reduce the thermal noise. Otherwise, you have a lot of error. Then, cryogenic electronics at 1 to 4 Kelvin becomes very important. Another is space exploration. Right? Do we overlook this? Uh, we have more present in the space now. Right? If, uh, uh, if, uh, so, uh, for example, on top of Pluto, it's like 33.1 Kelvin. When you send a, a, a robot there, how can you ensure your electronic is working? Do you know how they ensure it is working nowadays? They actually carry a radioactive isotope to do the heating. So now in all the important electronics you send to the space, they actually put an isotope, which is long lasting, keep heating up the electronics so that it is at room temperature. This is not desirable, right? Expensive, right? So what if our electronics get work at that low temperature? Then you don't need that, right? Another thing is um, people talk about this high performance server. Later you will see we are going to study this at low temperature, their performance becomes very good, right? For example, Microsoft have tested, has tested to put their server actually immersed in the sea because it has super good cooling power. If you Google, I think Facebook have a big data center in Norway or Finland just because it's cool, right? You don't want to build a data center in Arizona. That's just a waste of air, con air conditioning, right? Another is actually a special scientific instrument I did not say, I did not mention here. Uh, some instrument, you need to go to very low temperature, right? Uh, for example, those you use on the high, uh, high energy particle accelerator collider, all those uh, you want to detect the emission of the uh, subatomic particle. Uh, all this you need uh, the, uh, what do you call, the uh, cryogenic electronics. Right? So that is important in this aspect. In the past, it's not that important. In the past, you don't have quantum computer. You don't have, we don't have much presence on the space uh, right, and also we don't need that like cryogenic cool uh, server. But these are important for machine learning. It is everything in our daily life nowadays. Everyone is trying to go to space and quantum computer, and that's why it becomes important. Here, I try to give you another sense of what why we have different temperature. This is a quantum computer, uh, but uh, ignore whether it's a quantum computer. This is something called direction refrigerator. It is a stage that can bring you down to 10 mini Kelvin. And you have different stages, 300, 6, and 1 Kelvin, and 10 mini Kelvin. So the signal will come from here. This is just what you learn in other classes, right? E223, uh, the analog circuit, I don't know the code, right? The digital circuit, ASIC, FPGA, Python programming. You send all the pulse all the way to 4 Kelvin, you have a quantum chip here manipulate it, and then read the information, right? So in, the, in this process, you go through some quantum limiter amplifier, which we won't study, 
But then you go to maybe HEMD, High Electron Mobility Transistor, which we will touch upon a little bit. And then low noise amplifier, this is a main part of this class. You are going to have a design project to do the low noise amplifier. Uh, sometimes it is put at room temperature, but sometimes it's put at 40 or 60 Kelvin, right? So that's, uh, so th this is uh, what you will see, right? So that's why I say, uh, although now physics students are very important for the quantum chip, but the rest of the part are engineering. Right? So you, you can think about joining this industry. And in case you cannot find a job, what you learn here is still applicable to regular uh, circuit design. And here, show again, this is IBM's uh, picture. right? And on top of this, you are going to have a lot of control equipment, local oscillator, uh, AWG, arbitrary waveform generator, right? VNA, vector network analyzer, etc. And this shows the scale, right? You see this lady is about the same height of this direction refrigerator. Here is from Quantum Machines. So I quote this because this is one of the leading companies to sell uh, the control electronics for quantum computer. Here uh, are the analog digital output and in, inside they build a lot of FPGA. So if you are working on FPGA, some of you, and you're interested in doing uh, quantum computing, they are highly relevant. How do you generate the correct se signal? Of course, people also use FPGA to do the uh, simulation for uh, quantum qubit, right? Um, and here have a lot of Python programming here, right? Then you send this uh, signal out, you go for a mixer, bring it to higher frequency, five gigahertz or 10 gigahertz, then it interrogates the qubit, right? This is something called broad sphere. You can ignore it. And this is a transmo uh, 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 resonator. So again, or if you use superconducting qubit, the whole quantum chip is just a microwave circuit. Or you learn in EE140, and then maybe I forgot the code name, right? Uh, by uh, uh, the, 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 or the microwave circuit, right? You learn all these things, resonator, uh, coupler, um, a filter, then you, you, you will use it here. And then you go back, as I showed you earlier, you read the signal through this tuber quantum limiter amplifier called uh, uh, tuber is a traveling wave parametric amplifier, and then go through the ham. Uh, uh, the second time I mentioned it, right? We'll mention it again. So I hope you'll be very familiar with this, be comfortable with this at the end of the class, right? High electron mobility transistor, right? Uh, no need to memorize. We eventually we will uh, do it again, but this is just the immersion, right? As I said, and then you measure it. Right? This is a quantum computer. And in future, I, now I said that you have this uh, quantum processor here, and then you try to put this electronics at one Kelvin or four Kelvin, right? That would be great. Currently, most of them are just put at 300 Kelvin, and then you uh, uh, interrogate the quantum processor, but that has a lot of noise and think about how do you do the integration. I have a key side equipment here, so bulky, and I have this uh, coaxial line so long and go into this quantum chip. So I have a 100 qubit, how am I going to have so many controller? The best is that I can put the electronics right next to it. That's just the ideal thing, right? I also need to tell you the uh, scam or some of the, uh, something people usually don't try to mention, for example, this is going to generate microwatt of power at least, or milliwatt, right, if you have a large controlling system. But we don't have a direction refrigerator that can cool down that much of energy, right? So, or, or I mean, microwatt is okay, but I mean, when you integrate it to a large scale, 1,000 qubit, you probably cannot cool down, right? So there are lots of caveats uh, uh, in this whole field. Right? But just pay attention to that. Understand what people are talking about. Now, so here I show the LNA, FinFET SOI transistor. This is uh, what we will study. Okay, any questions? <laughs> now, let's go a little bit faster then. Right? Uh, since we're talking about cryogenic, it's important to have an idea about energy scale. You all know what it is, but now have something imprinted in your mind. Thermal energy is given by Boltzmann constant times the temperature, right? This is KT. Now, this unit is like EV per Kelvin, right? 
So at 300 Kelvin, do you know what is the uh, thermal energy? About approximately uh, at room temperature. Remember the dial equation? about 25 to 26 millivolt, yeah, EV, electron volt, yeah. So you just plug in the number 300 times. This one will get you to the 25 millivolt, right? So you should expect in homework or maybe exam, I'm going to at least have subpart ask you to do this type of conversion, right? You need to have this type of idea. So if the thermal energy means the noise, the fluctuation is in the order of 25 milli EV, that is here. Here plots the temperature in log scale. 300 Kelvin, this is our room temperature, right? And its energy is about 25 milli electron volt. Now, for a quantum system, for example, here is a superconducting qubit. You have a two level separating them, zero and one. It is only in the order of uh, 20 micro EV, okay? Much, much smaller than this one. That's why it does not work. You cannot see quantum effect at room temperature because the separation is smeared out, right? It's just like on a bus, uh, it vibrates up and down by 10 cm. And then you ask someone standing outside to say, um, can you separate the distance of my two fingers? We separate by only, let's say, 0.5 cm. The one sitting outside of the bus, it keeps going up and down. You really don't know, cannot say what level it is, right, for these two fingers, right? That's just an analogy. So that's why this is the qubit separation temperature. So it corresponds to about uh, maybe, I don't know, 3 or 0.3 or 0.5 Kelvin, right? So in order to make it work, we need to bring it down to maybe 10 milli Kelvin, about 100 times smaller than your energy separation, so I can ignore the thermal noise. Okay, so this is another thing uh, you need to think about. But how do we talk about this uh, energy separation? We talk about the energy of photon. Now, uh, as an electrical engineer, we always, we sometimes forget that all the EM wave are photons. So sometimes people look at the microwave circuit and tell you, oh, it's absorbing one photon. They say, what? Uh, that is not nice, right? Photon doesn't mean it has to be nice. Remember, uh, in EE, we learn about EM, and it is everything already. Anything, all this excitation come from electromagnetic. Whether it's infrared, radio wave, or the photon you are seeing, they are all, or, or the night you are seeing, they are all photon. And they all represent by H bar omega. They just have different, uh, different uh, frequency. Make sense? It's just a microwave, they're really long. For example, the microwave uh, you use in your home, maybe, 50 centimeter long for the wavelength. It's a photon, actually, right? It's a cavity. Uh, so it's something say, uh, someone say that, oh, this photon in your microwave uh, uh, is uh, that much. Do not feel surprised. Uh, no, it's just EM. But no, it is photon, right? So we will talk about photon. So don't, don't, don't get confused when some people say, oh, this resonator absorbs one more photon, emits one photon. It's just saying that the resonator mode lose one unit of energy because it's EM wave after all. So in order to find the energy of the photon, this is the standard equation, H bar omega, right? We just take this for granted, right? Um, so you will want to compare this one to this one. So now come to the question, is that in superconductor qubit, why we usually, uh, why, the mic, why they operate at 5 gigahertz? Because you look at this, I just told you that the separation is not large enough. Why don't you make it larger? Use higher frequency. Uh, the reason is that we don't have good microwave electronics. The microwave between ten, uh, 5 gigahertz to 20 gigahertz are well engineered, and we have very good knowledge, and it works well on silicon substrate, I mean on silicon chip, right? If you say I increase this one to 5 terahertz, then basically you, you get all the microwave get absorbed by the defect or et cetera. Right? So there is a reason that they pick five gigahertz. But because it's five gigahertz, then your energy separation is smaller. Okay? So this is uh, something I want you to uh, memorize. Thermal energy KT, uh, 
energy of photon h bar omega looks very simple right but i want you to really understand it don't spend more time when i ask you to think about what it is any questions if no then uh, i will first talk about